Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Um, today we're gonna to be looking at how to use LLMware to ingest PDF documents at scale for retrieval augmented generation. Now maybe it'd help to frame uh, the demo that we're gonna look at. Uh, what is the hardest part of retrieval augmented generation? Is it interacting with the LLM? Is it pushing data into a vector database? Is it all facets related to prompt management? Well, we would actually argue that the hardest part of RAG is at scale, how do you actually parse, extract, and text chunk the original source documents, uh, most of which have been packaged in you know, easily human consumable formats like PDFs and PowerPoints and Word documents and Excel, but how do you actually extract that information systematically, quickly, and at scale so you can start drawing on all the knowledge that's in that information? We believe that getting that information into the RAG pipeline is oftentimes the hardest, hardest part towards really delivering a scalable RAG system. So to get started, uh, we are going to use the LLMware um, framework. Uh, you can pip install, uh, you can go to the GitHub repo, um, the sample code that we're going to look at um, is available in that repo. We also have some other videos if you have any trouble um, installing it. What we're going to use for the purpose of this demo um, are some sample documents um, from uh, the United Nations. These are uh, actually 500 um, documents. We're going to look at United Nations resolutions. They happen to be packaged as PDFs. Uh, they are all available on the uh, UN website. And they range anywhere from probably around two pages, or I think are the shortest ones, to up to about 20 pages, which are the longest ones. You'll see the average document is five, six, seven pages. Um, you can see the representative format, very similar to any type of kind of legal, regulatory, government, fairly formal in terms of language and um, you know, uh, stipulating various resolutions that were passed um, you know, in, in the course of that particular uh, General Assembly meeting. So just to show you um, a little bit about what those look like, um, let me just show you um, the folder that they happen to be in. Um, it's this folder, um, UN 500. Um, and again, like a lot of official documents, they are not named in very helpful ways. Um, They're just named by an N and then followed by a, a long integer number. Um, you can see also, we haven't done any special preparation. These are just simply the PDFs. We copied, pasted them, and put them all into this folder. Uh, no other uh, kind of special processing or anything else has gone into it. And now let's take a look at the code. Um, you can see the code itself that we're going to be going through is super short. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to um, import um, from uh, LLMware. We're going to pull in the library class, which is what's going to be doing all the work. Uh, we are going to point um, at our input file path, which is just the file path we just looked at that has all of those documents in it. And then this output path, what we're actually going to do at the end of the demo, we're going to parse all these documents and then we're going to dump, export all of that output into JSONL. And this is where we're going to put it. Again, I'll, I'll take a minute to show you that. And then because we actually want to see what's happening while all the parsing is going on, uh, we're going to set a debug mode to 1. The code itself is actually really simple, um, could not be simpler. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a library. Um, we're gonna give it a name. The name then becomes a way that we can retrieve this um, in the future um, and do all sorts of other downstream activities, um, whether it's querying, retrieval, generating knowledge graphs, integrating it into a prompt, uh, pushing any of this information um, into a vector database uh, with embeddings. All of that happens around the library as the unifying uh, collection or index uh, point, if you will. Uh, second thing then, and where all the work is really going to happen, is in this one line of code. Um, this actually goes to that folder path. Um, within that folder path, it starts reading through, opening up the binaries for every single one of those files. Uh, it reads the PDFs, um, it extracts the information, it text chunks it, it extracts all of the metadata, um, it pushes it then into a database um, so that we have it for um, follow-up retrieval. And then finally, in the last step, uh, we're actually going to push all of this content once the parsing is complete in a really nice JSON-L format. So again, it could be pushed into any upstream system that you would be looking at. Um, and so with that as a backdrop, let's go ahead and run the demo. Now it's going to take a second, and what we're seeing here, um, and I know it's going by pretty quickly, but we'll actually come back at this at the end. 
But what you can see is the PDF parser is moving pretty quickly. Um, it, it's going through, it's reading all the native um, PDF um, objects. It's going through all the Flate uh, decompressed process. Um, it's extracting then page by page and um, text object by text object, all of the relevant text. That text is being chunked, and you can probably see here, we've set a text block to be at least 400 characters. So it actually is showing you how big is each of the text blocks that it's extracting. It's extracting all of the metadata information. So it's going through and reading the native um, PDF metadata. Um, we're gonna show you that at the end in the JSONL file, so you can see the kind of data that's being extracted. And it's moving through this in a completely automated way. So as you can see, we're not doing any kind of special processing or triaging. There wasn't anything done to you know, do, handle some files differently than other files. And now you can actually see we're, we're done. So uh, you can look at this summary. We just parsed 500 documents. Uh, we chunked it into 12,000 uh, blocks. Those blocks include both the text, tables, um, and images. And whenever we extract an image block, it actually is registered, as well as the image itself is captured and saved and extracted. Um, as well as all the text that was surrounding that image. So again, that's a subject for probably a future demo. Um, we have, uh, we extracted 1,200, 2,700 pages of text. We did all of this in 46 seconds. So we were clicking about 10 documents per second. The parsing output, which I, I said we would just take a look at, this actually gives you a really nice summary of the parsing activity. And then you can see here, for those who use Macs, you know, one of the kind of the legacy features, depending on how those files were um, added or copied into that folder path, sometimes there's this annoying DS store. Um, what this shows actually is anything that's in that folder path that is not a recognized file type um, actually is a rejected file. You can get a view of that. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about cleaning up a folder path so that it only has certain files in it. If it's, if it's a, if a supported file type, it's gonna be parsed. If it's not a supported file type, it's just gonna be skipped and, you, and you'll get a view of that. So all that information was parsed. Um, it was put into a database. Um, so all of that happened during the parsing process. Uh, but what we also did is we took this step to export it to a JSON-L file, just for the purpose um, of us easily being able to take a look at it. So let's, let's now look at that JSON-L output. That's what was created right here. And what you can see is we exported this to a really nice um, JSON file. Uh, what it actually captures then for each text block, it's indexed it in terms of the block and the document number. It tells us the content type, the file type. And in this case, it even is extracting for us the coordinates of where it is on the page. Um, so you can actually know not just that this was on page one, but where it was on that page. It captured the author information. It captured when it was modified last, when it was created. In this case, it even captured the creator tool. So this was a Microsoft a Word document that was converted to a PDF. It then, of course, captures all of the core text. Um, and you can see the core text came out pretty nice. Um, so it was pretty clean, um, the parsing job that was done here. And it even includes in the metadata some things that we tend to use in some of our upstream processing to enable people to tag information, additional special fields, to create knowledge graphs, captures whether this information was parsed as, as a dialogue. So all of the kinds of things that you can immediately take, drop into a database and build a retrieval-based application around. We hope um, that this was helpful just to give you a sense of some of the parsing capabilities um, within LLMware, how easy and fast it can be to extract um, and parse uh, useful information out of 500 PDF documents. Um, in future demos, uh, we're actually gonna show you what you do once you've created this, whether it's retrieval, whether it's integrating it into a prompt, uh, building a knowledge graph, doing some really cool end-to-end -end RAG workflows, but ultimately the starting point for that is scalable ingestion of PDF content. Thanks again. Please check out um, the other videos in our video series. Thank you.